Hi Thrifties, it's Lejeune Canada and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a haul to. So a haul to is kind of like a how to, but we're going to use a whole bunch of things that I've thrifted over the years. So today we're going to make a pout brisé. The other week I made my first quiche or quiche and I've been obsessed. So the only thing with making a quiche is that you have to have like a pie crust on the ready because it kind of sucks like the pie crust preparation is long, but it's good because you can freeze them, have them in the freezer. When you need to make a quiche, you just got to think of it the day before and then pull it out and make your quiche. The pau brise that we're going to make today, though, is good for either sweet or savory dishes. What we're going to need in terms of tools is a heavy bowl, I've got a measuring cup, I've got a knife to cut the butter, I've got a uh, big antique uh, like salad fork to do the mixing, I've got uh, measuring spoons. These are like vintage Tupperware ones. And I've got a whole bunch of bowls uh, to have to hold all my individual ingredients. And then what we're also going to need is two pieces of cling film or like plastic wrap or if you're in French speaking Ontario, du saran wrap. That's a thing like Kleenex. Like it's like a facial tissue, but you call it a Kleenex. Saran I think was like a brand of plastic wrap in the 70s. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. Let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. Here's what we're gonna need in terms of ingredients, guys. The nine lemons in this bowl is feng shui. In feng shui, nine lemons in a bowl brings prosperity and good luck to a household. So that's why I have those there. We got two and a half cups of white all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, um, 250 milliliters of butter, or that's equivalent to two sticks of butter. And I have a bowl here of ice water with the ice almost melted. So first things first, we're gonna Taylor swiftly sift the flour, salt, and sugar together. Make sure to get it everywhere all over the counter. So go ahead and add half your butter to that mixture. Oh, uh, Oh, all right, that's about half. And then you're gonna want to start breaking down the butter into the flour until you, okay, yeah, there's the rest, until you end up with a coarse sand texture. There it is, there's the coarse sand. Once you've achieved that, what you're gonna wanna do is add your tablespoons of cold water to the mixture. Before I started kneading my dough, I added about three tablespoons. Flour a su clean surface, and then pour your mixture onto it. And then you're gonna start kneading that baby, just like you knead your friends and family. So pout brise translates quite literally to broken paste. Paste being like a mixture of flour and butter. Um, so this, broken paste was actually too broken so i had to add additional water to it so that it would actually form a ball it wouldn't form a ball it kept breaking apart on me which just means is gonna the breakiness of the dough is going to be the flakiness of your pie crust later now once you have the two balls made make sure to pick up all those lovely little bits um now it's time to saran wrap them so you just like loosely, there's no technique to this, sides first, then go over top. No, it doesn't matter. Just do your thing. And then you, uh, you have two pie crusts. Yay! All right, now that we have our pub brisee balls made, these are gonna last up to three days in the fridge and I think up to a month in the freezer. The thing with these balls is that one recipe makes two balls. One ball is equivalent of a pie crust bottom. If you're doing a top dressed pie, uh, like an apple pie with uh, a crust topping, then you're gonna need both of the balls in order to make that. If you're just making a bottom um, piece of pie crust for let's say example a quiche, then you're going to uh, only need one of them. No thrift haul is complete without going over some old items together. Um, that's definitely my favorite part. So um, I'm just going to tell you guys what I have and then I'll show you guys a little up close. 
So this is just a collection of my blue and white uh, pottery. I have these old Tupperware brand measuring spoons. I have a vintage martini knife. Jay Martini is a Finnish uh, blacksmith or knife maker in Finland that makes top quality knives. And then I have this vintage 1978 clay bowl. This fork that I used is just an 1881 Rogers Oneida Limited uh, fork that's part of this big set. So, so come on closer and have a peek. Hey everyone, I didn't even wash these. I wanted you guys to see them in the raw after they've been used. So this first one up top is a made in China soup bowl. This here is a Indies Johnson Brothers made in England. This is a teacup saucer. It's an Adams England, but the branding on it is very, very blurry and hard to make out. But it's Tokyo print. And then this last one is actually part of a set of four, which I showed you guys in a previous thrift haul video. This is a very heavy, like clay, glazed clay stoneware bowl. I do not bake or mix without it. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Noel in 1978 for making it. Martini knives are handmade in Finland. I'm gonna put the link below to the website because they make all sorts of knives and they're of the highest quality. I've said before and I'll say it again, I'm not a fan of plastic, but there's just something so nostalgic about these green Tupperware brand measuring spoons. I think it's because when I was a kid, we had a green bowl in the same plastic. So Rogers 1881 is um, quite generic. It was a silver place setting made for the masses. So it's quite common, um, but it's silver plated. And if you clean it up nice, it comes out good. Thank you so much for watching. So what you're gonna need in terms of tools is a heavy bottom bowl. Heavy bottom bowl. Do, 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 do. Hi Thrifties, it's Sajant Skanda. How have you guys been? <laughs>